Welcome to the Ask Dr. Deanna Show. I'm Dr. Deanna Holdren, your host. Join me weekly as I cover various health-related lifestyle medicine topics that you get to request. This show is for anyone who wants to proactively improve their health position. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the next episode of the Ask Dr. Deanna pod- podcast. I'm excited to be with you today and excited for this topic. This is also one of my favorites. Um, I am so passionate about health and about wellness, and I'm passionate about your health and wellness too. Uh, I want you to get on the healthy bandwagon with us and just uh, you know be able to thrive and live a vibrant, healthy life uh, because of it. So uh, health is is so meaningful. And, you know, I've always said, you know, you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have your health, it won't matter. And uh, I absolutely believe that. So today our topic is, uh, we're going to answer the question, um, are you gaining weight because of insulin resistance? One of my favorite topics is helping people manage weight. Uh, How do I get this weight off? What happened? How did I get here? Uh, You know, in terms of weight gain. And, And oftentimes, you know, people just kind of wake up and and they've gained maybe five pounds a year, five pounds, five pounds, five pounds, and then they, you know, wake up and they're 20 pounds heavier. They don't feel good. Or maybe they're 100 pounds heavier even. Um, you know, we've seen that all across the board. And what I know is no matter where you are, no matter how much weight you have to lose, it can be done. And sometimes it's just simple changes that can make a huge difference overall. Uh, but most of the time when people are gaining weight, and, and this is very common. I have people come into the practice. Um, they're gaining weight. They they feel like, you know, I exercise. I go to the gym regularly. Uh, I, you know, watch what I eat. Um, I'm doing all these things, but I'm still gaining weight. And, or I'm not losing weight. You know, I'm just stuck. I'm at this plateau. And, and what do I do? You know, how, how do I tackle this? Well, first of all, let's start by answering our question. You know, are you gaining weight because of insulin resistance? And let me break that down, how that works. Works and why insulin resistance does, in fact, cause us to gain weight. And even if you are not a diabetic, you still can be in the process of developing insulin resistance. So what is insulin resistance? Let's start with that. Insulin resistance is basically uh, a product of, of the current diet, okay? The current diet and the sedentary lifestyle, those two things coupled together. So current diet plus sedentary lifestyle equals insulin resistance, okay? And so when you look at the current diet, um, you know, we are grain fed in the U.S. We eat a massive amount of carbs, bread, pasta, rice, um, you know, all kinds of carbohydrate, carbohydrate, carbohydrate. Okay, we're not going to focus on the fact that much of that carb is loaded with chemicals that are that are you know mass sprayed on there that are you know m- messing up your gut, uh, your microbiome specifically. That's not the focus of today. That's last week if you want to learn about that. Uh, but what we are going to focus on is that the the fact that when we're eating all of this grain and we're drinking high you know products that have high fructose corn syrup. Or condiments with high fructose corn syrup, such as ketchup, um, salad dressings, you know, barbecue sauce. All of those things have high fructose corn syrup uh, in there, which is so toxic to the system. Uh, it also, you know, when you look at all the sugar and all the grain, it spikes our blood sugar. Okay, so now I just ate uh, this load of carbohydrate and, you know, simple carbs and sugar. My blood sugar goes through the roof, right? My body works. I'm not diabetic. And so what it's going to do, my pancreas is going to produce a bunch of insulin to bring my blood sugar down. If it doesn't, then I've got high blood sugar running through my 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 bloodstream. And when you have high blood sugar, believe it or not, it is literally like ketchup going through your arteries, and that's what your heart is having to pump. So it, you know, the sugar in the bloodstream makes the um, blood way more uh, increases the viscosity or the density of it because there's sugar in it. Okay, so for most of us, okay, we produce all this insulin, and it brings that blood sugar down. Okay, over time, our cells start to become resistant to the insulin and they aren't as responsive. So our pancreas keeps making more, more, more. The insulin level keeps going higher and higher and higher because 
um, you know, it's not working. It's not working as well uh, to bring that blood sugar down. So we keep making more and we create this place, the, this, this condition uh, called insulin resistance, where if I were to test your blood levels, you would see, and I tested your insulin level, you would see that your insulin level is high, okay? Because again, you've got some level of insulin resistance going on. A lot of the 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 uh, current style of eating that that we have in the U.S. or whatever um, really supports that. Okay, so tons of meals. Okay, like you're eating three or four meals a day. You're having snacks in between. All of that. Yeah, it's not good. It is not good at all because it promotes insulin resistance because you're basically creating this kind of yo-yo up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, you know, if I eat a lot of carbs, okay, I'm going to be in a carb coma here in about an hour afterwards, uh, but I'm also, you know, going to probably within two to three hours, I'm going to be hungry again uh, because my blood sugar is now low and I need to get it back up. And so we go low, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, and this insulin resistance thing happens. Okay, so how does that make you gain weight? Well, the insulin, insulin is actually a growth hormone, okay? It's a growth hormone, and it is going to send the message, hey, we don't need this for, for energy right now. Store it as fat. Guess where it gets stored as fat? It gets stored around our organs, around the liver. Okay, so now think fatty liver because I have a ton of patients who are struggling with fatty liver right now, which is also a reversible condition, you guys. It needs to be reversed before it turns into cirrhosis and then it's not reversible. Uh, but basically, fatty liver, uh, we also end up storing that fat or creating, you know, storing that, that excess sugar as fat uh, because of insulin on the abdomen, on the back of the arms, on the thighs, you name it, all those places that we all hate, um, you know, that's where we're storing it. So it does end up causing weight gain. So one of the best things you can do to lose weight is to, to stop that, okay, to get it under control and to eliminate insulin resistance, okay? So the first thing is ask your doctor to check your insulin levels, okay? Just say, I'm concerned about insulin resistance. I listened to a podcast. They talked a lot about insulin resistance, and I want to know if I have that. So can you check my insulin levels? Um, I actually like to check those with our routine wellness labs uh, if it's a possibility um, th to throw that in because it, it gives me a good idea of where this person is. And you can be normal weight even and still have some insulin resistance going on. You can be normal weight and still have have some fatty liver going on where you're storing, you know, that fat on the inside. So how do we tackle this? What do we do? Well, the first thing is, you know, lowering that carbohydrate content. Okay. We, we eat way too many carbs. Okay. It is not normal to eat 100 to 150 grams of carbohydrates per meal. Okay. A muffin has over 40 grams of carbohydrates in it. It's all sugar and, and processed and all that stuff. All right. Now, maybe not the muffins you're making in your kitchen, all right? Those would probably, you know, maybe be fine depending on what you're putting in there. Uh, but generally speaking, the stuff that we're buying that's in a package is going to have that high of a carb content. You go out to eat for dinner and you have the pasta dish or whatever. I mean, you're, you're hitting and you have a piece of bread with it. You're hitting 150 grams of carbohydrates in a day. Generally speaking, I try to keep my total amount of carbs Okay, I carb ration, um, ideally in the 30 to 50 gram range, okay, uh, definitely under 50. If I'm at weight where I want to be, I don't need to lose any weight, I'm good with where I am, then 50 is reasonable, okay? But, but I have to keep it low. Why? Because diabetes runs in my family, type 2 insulin, um, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance runs in my family. And if I gain 20, 30 pounds, I most likely would be diabetic. I definitely would have um, issues with insulin resistance, um, which is the, the step before type 2 diabetes. Um, so um, we, we want to bring that carb content down. All right. We also want to incorporate some intermittent fasting. A lot of times I, you hear me talk about intermittent fasting and what a powerful tool that is. Why is it so powerful? It's powerful because 
when you are doing intermittent fasting and you're in a fasted state, um, you're breaking down some of this fat. You're eliminating the fat. So typically when we do intermittent fasting, I tell all of my patients, hey, look, no matter what your situation, you got to fast 12 hours every single night. That's normal. We should all be doing that 12 hours every night because it takes 12 hours to burn through the sugar or the glucose that's in our system. All right. After that, after 12 hours, we are burning fat. Okay. I love it when you're not in the gym and you're burning fat. Your body's breaking down fat. If you feel hungry, it's breaking something down and it will find an energy source, all that stuff that was stored previously. So I typically will have people start with 12 hours, get that down. If they feel good with that and they've conquered that and are doing really well, then I'll have them move to 14 hours uh, on their fast. If they are doing well there, they might move to 16. My standard personally, if somebody said, well, hey, what are you doing? Um, I generally fast 16 hours uh, pretty much every day. Um, Generally about two days a week, I'm hitting 18 hours uh, on my fast. And so I eat the most, the majority of my calories will come in an eight hour eating window or a six-hour eating window, and that has helped me to control insulin resistance, uh, to you know keep my weight exactly where I want it to be, uh, and to be healthy um, metabolically. Because this is a metabolic issue. This is a metabolic endocrine issue, and it affects everything. It absolutely does. It makes such a difference in your total overall health, not just from the standpoint of what's my weight doing, but also what's going on in my gut, what's going on in my brain, what's going on in my joints, all of that. It all plays in together. And so, you know, you can make a huge difference in your overall health by tackling this, getting rid of the high fructose corn syrup drinks, okay? So if you go through um, a drive through and you get a, a, a sweet tea, even if you get the half cut, okay, I know what you do, you get the half cut, um, it is still, that is high fructose corn syrup that it, that it is sweetened with. Um, you know, a, a soda, that's high fructose corn syrup. All of the things I mentioned, a lot of those condiments, those are things that we have to be on the lookout for because they are having a negative impact on our health. You buy um, store processed, uh, you know, Rice Krispie treats for your kid's lunchbox. You know, those Rice Krispie treats uh, that people used to make at home. Okay, so the Rice Krispie treat, high fructose corn syrup. It is loaded with so much garbage. You absolutely don't want that. So when you're reducing carbs, just a little tip, um, you know, when you're reducing that carbohydrate content, you know, we want moderate amounts of protein. uh, But when you reduce the carbohydrate content, you also are going to need to increase uh, the fat content in your diet. So you want healthy fats. I'm not talking about bacon here, okay, for my bacon lovers out there. I'm talking about things like avocados, um, olive oil, um, flax, you know, flax seeds, uh, a lot of those omega-3s, you know, salmon is an excellent source uh, of omega-3 um, essential fats. Uh, so you want healthy fats in the diet and you will need um, that healthy fat to basically help you to feel full uh, and so forth. So, um, you know, these are just some of my some of my tips as far as, you know, how do we end up uh, you know, reversing this insulin resistance. Uh, is the insulin resistance the cause of the weight gain? Absolutely it is. Um, it's because you've got high circulating insulin levels. Um, and, and not only that, okay, it is also one of the number one causes of polycystic ovarian disease or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, that is a syndrome in which, um, you know, women of reproductive age, you know, they are, they're struggling uh, with infertility. They're not able to get pregnant, most likely because they're not ovulating. Well, when your insulin levels are running that high, okay, in, in the system, it is going to cause or contribute this the, or to this um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I have women pull that carbohydrate content down, way down, nourish the ovaries. We have a whole program that we do um, that helps women who are struggling with infertility due to polycystic ovarian syndrome and, and make such a huge difference. But that is an endocrine problem and it is absolutely tied to those high circulating insulin levels. So 
let's tackle um, you know, insulin resistance. Let's reverse it. Uh, it is a reversible disease, as is type 2 diabetes. And you know, let's live healthy, happy lives uh, because of it. So thanks so much for joining me, everybody. I really appreciate it. And I hope that this information has been helpful. So don't forget, uh, you can go to our Facebook page. You can go to our Instagram. You can go to our website and you can pose a question. Uh, we love hearing your questions. You know, That's why I call the podcast Ask Dr. Deanna, because I get a lot of questions throughout my day and I just bring those uh, to uh, you know this this site to basically answer um, both for my patients uh, as well as for friends for family for other people out there and um, just trying to make a difference one person at a time so thanks so much everybody have a great day I hope you enjoyed that episode for more information visit me at deannaholdren.com find me on Facebook Instagram and Twitter at Dr. Deanna Holdren I really want to hear from you, so message me. I love taking your messages and creating topics from them. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share my show with those who have an interest in health and wellness. Thank you for tuning in and see you next week.